piezotone cube, like the electric bone stall thing. Yes. Uh, she said she usually uses that for men 25 or older. I'm like mm -hmm. right threshold. Mm -hmm. And I remember you said that could help with preventing asymmetry. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said that I, I could use it. Um, but she wants, I have a CBT key scan that's been ordered. So I'll see. Um, she said, we'll see from that, but also she's not like, she doesn't think I'll need it, but she also said that it's up to me if I want to use it. And that's kind of like a toss up, right? That is a toss up. That is a toss up. That one makes me take a deep breath. Um, you could always try it without it. And if your first MSC fails, you can always go back and do it the second time around. However, mm -hmm. even if even if you get a split without the piezoelectric assist, so b just to explain to the audience what the piezoelectric assist means, so the thing looks almost like a like a fountain pen in the doctor's hand, and it's an ultrasonic. Uh, it has an ultrasonic tip that generates a lot of heat. And what the doctor will do is she'll score it up and down your mid-palatal suture until basically they they score it sufficiently to the point that the MSC can just sort of snap it like a twig or like an egg. Or they'll just cut all the way through. I don't know how deep they go with it, but they definitely score the hell out of the mid-palatal suture. My understanding is right through the gum. I mean, right through the skin at the roof of your mouth. So this is a tool that is being used to greatly increase the success rate of splitting adults with with the MSE because, you know, failure to split was the issue with MSE for a long time and continues to be an issue for any provider who does not offer this piezoelectric uh, surgical assist. So it's a great option to have available to you. It probably hurts like a bitch and... It's probably not great in to, to traumatize your body like that, you know? So if you can avoid it, I think it's it's ideal to, to just have the break be totally internal from the device. However, even if you can force a split without the piezoelectric knife, you risk sacrificing the integrity of the appliance in the process. Let me tell you what I mean. The MSC might win its battle with your with your maxilla. It might win without the assist. Mine did, for example, as a 28-year-old male. However, in the process, the MSC might get mangled, which means it might twist. Some of the screws might get a little bent. You might get a little bit of bone drag on one side. You know, essentially, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat between the MSC and the suture. And they're both going to come out of that beat up. And if the MSC gets beat up, now maybe it's twisted, right? And then when it starts expanded, expanding, maybe it starts expanding you diagonally. Or maybe, maybe who knows? A lot of bad things can happen when the MSC gets distorted by its fight with the mid paddle suture. So um, it's not really about Oh, can it split you? The question is, can it split you cleanly without the surgical assist, without it compromising its own um, arrangement in your maxilla, its own sort of orientation and strength of the appliance? So I think that's a tough one, and deciding whether or not to do the surgical assist. Yeah, that's I a remember tough one. you made a video like after your MSC split talking about like, how painful it was like multiple days and I feel like for the piezo like it might hurt a lot in the moment but then at least I get the split immediately for sure and then but... the other thing to consider is the psychological pain of wondering is this going to split because for weeks for some people they keep turning it no split, turning it, no split. Is this going to split? Am I wasting my money? Am I wasting my time? Was that painful install? Was it all just, you know, a waste waste of time and pain and effort and energy? However, if you do get the surgical assist, that's it. You're done. You're split. You don't have to worry for one second, never mind weeks, 
about is this actually going to happen. So you're right. There's a lot of pain that's averted for um, you're, you're basically concentrating all of that pain into a 48-hour period when you do the piezo assist as opposed to rolling the dice and stretching that psychological and physical pain out over multiple weeks. I would do the assist if it were me. Okay. When you say surgical assist, are you specifically talking about piezo or is there another kind? No, that's that's the kind I'm talking about because it's available to you. She's offering okay. it. It's the best kind. But, of course, there are other kinds. There's the, the full-on dome. There's the dome partial where they just chisel down the middle and they split the maxilla from here, splitting it like a log. There's cortical puncturing. That's pretty much That pretty much covers the list of surgical assists. Okay. So you think I should do piezo? But that's what I... you would be leaning toward. I don't. I am not saying you should do it. I'm saying I would do it if I were you. But it's okay. it's your it's it's got to be your decision, man. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I'm leaning toward. Uh, just as you said, to avert all the psychological pain. And also, just to minimize the risk of asymmetry by twenty yeah. percent is worth it, because asymmetry is the other big problem with MSC. Yeah. So anything you can do to mitigate that risk is is helpful too. Yeah, I think she said the plan for mitigating asymmetry is I would take specific pictures every week. And then like, if there's even a little bit, then I would just turn the screw back, wait a week, and screw it again. Mm -hmm. uh, although I'm not sure how many screws I would be doing per week. So... That would be something that we'd talk about later, I assume. Yeah, the one word of caution I'll give you on that is make sure she actually reviews you weekly because one of the things I've heard about your doctor is that she will, uh, she has sent a patient off to do lots and lots of expansion with a different appliance and didn't really check in on him for months. And over that period, some problems occurred. And... Um, she kind of missed it. And that happens. That happened to me with um, my acrylic expander, for example. My provider was in Colorado. I was in Massachusetts. He didn't really check in on me for months. Shit sort of went sideways. My gums got messed up on some of my upper back teeth, and my teeth got flared, especially upper molars. So um, it's easy to say that you're going to check in on a patient every week. It's harder to do when you're seeing 50 patients a day for five or six days a week, that's how many patients? Five times 50 is 250 patients a week. So you got to make sure she actually uh, puts her money where her mouth is on that. Yeah, so just bug her until she checks, checks them. Yeah, or just stay on top of it and don't have blind faith that she's going to do it. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Hey, right. doctor, here's my pictures. Let me know what you think. If she doesn't respond, hey, doctor, just following up. Did you get my photos? Yeah. What do you think? Am I looking okay? Squeaky wheel gets the grease. 